Functions are one of the most common things that you'll find in mathematics. This topic is going to be all about functions. In the first video, we'll just look at what they are. So what is a function? Well, functions express relationships between variables. An example might be to talk about temperature being a function of the time of the day. Now a single variable function, what we'll be mostly concerned with, is a relationship between two variables. Now that sounds a bit strange, that it's a single variable function and there's two variables in it. We'll see why in a minute. We call these two variables an independent variable and a dependent variable. So an example written in mathematical terms might be y equal to x squared. Here, y is a function of x. x is called the independent variable and y is called the dependent variable. And that's because the value of y depends on what the value of x is. Now jumping back, that's why we have this called a single variable function. The single refers to how many variables the dependent variable depends on. So here we have y depending on one thing, so it's a single variable function. The important thing with mathematical functions is that for every allowable value of x, or whatever the independent variable is, there'll only be one value of y. Now that's a very important characteristic of functions. If that's not satisfied, the thing we're looking at is not a function. Often we'll see this sort of little graphical representation of functions, where we have the input variable x going into what we sometimes call the, the function box, or a, a machine if you like, a thing where f changes x into something else. And here with our example again, it changes x into x squared, and we call that number y. Sometimes, instead of just writing something like y equals x squared, we'll use what's called function notation, which you can see an example of just here. We'll say that y equals f of x, or y is a function of x. Now, you'll often see y and x and f, but it doesn't really matter. You can use any letters you like, and often we'll use letters that make more sense, given the application or the problem that we're using, uh, looking at. So sometimes you'll see t when we're talking about time, s for displacement, and various other things as well. Just use whatever you feel comfortable with, but know that there will be various different options. Now it's fairly common to be asked to find the value of a function given a particular value of its independent variable. And when we do that, say for example when we're looking at an x value of say a, or 3, or 12, or minus 4, we write the value of the function as f of a. It's as if we've replaced x with that value a. So for example, the temperature is a function of the time of day. I might think of time of day being the number of hours past midnight. Well, it's summer at the moment, so this morning at about 1 a.m., or a time equal to 1, the temperature, which I'll call capital T, at time equals 1, was about 13 degrees at my place. A little bit later in the day, now, when it's about 9 a.m., I'm looking at T equals 9 hours after midnight, so I'll say my temperature at 9 a.m., and I know that it's roughly 25 or 26 degrees outside. So we write things like this when we're talking about values of functions. Now something important to note is that when we have f of x, that doesn't mean f times x, even though it kind of looks like it. Whenever we see f and then the brackets of x, in this sort of context, we're saying a function and its independent variable is x. Let's have a, couple, uh, have a look at a couple of examples of this. We're going to try to evaluate some different functions here, f of x, h of t, and g of s. Looking at f of x first of all, in part a, f of x is the function x squared minus 3x. Now that just means if I give you any x value, the function I want you to return to me will be the x value squared, take away 3 times the x value. So when we look for f of minus 1, we're looking for minus 1 squared, and then take away 3 times minus 1. Well, that's pretty easy. We can just go, that's 1 minus 3 times minus 1 is plus 3. And we end up with 4. You can do a similar thing with the other values. f of 0, we just substitute 0 in. We get 0 squared minus 3 times 0, which is, of course, 0. And f of 1, we need to replace x with 1. So we get 1 squared minus 3 times 1. And that's 1 minus 3, or minus 2. So that's evaluating a function for certain values of its independent variable. Now those values won't always be actual numbers. Sometimes, as you can see in part b, we'll have a variable again coming into the function. 
So let's have a look at what this one means. You want to pause the video for a minute and have a go at that one yourself. Try to replace the T with M minus 1. Okay, so I've actually done this already, so I'm just going to have a look at that. And we'll see that when we replace the T in 8 minus 4T with M minus 1, we just get this expression part here. We can expand out that bracket to get 4M plus 4, and then simplify things by adding the 8 and the 4 to end up with 12 minus 4M. Now that's perfectly fine. It's a bit weird and looks a bit strange here, but sometimes that will happen. Let's have a look at this last one. Again, pause the video and try to do this one yourself, and then in a couple of seconds, come back and see how I've done it. Okay, so again, it's a weird one where we're actually replacing a variable with a new variable. Uh, it's kind of a, a composing of functions, which we'll talk about in another video. But for now, we're just substituting in. So g of s, we're talking about g of 3v squared. We're just replacing s with 3v squared everywhere on the left and the right. So you can see I've replaced the root s with root 3v squared. And down the bottom, s is just replaced with 3v squared. The only thing I've done on the next line is cleaned it up a little, uh, changing that square root on the top. So that's pretty much all you do with that one. Now remember the first uh, example that we looked at there, we looked at f of x is x squared minus 3x, and found three values of that function for three independent variable values, or input variable values if you like. Now what if we did that for a whole bunch of different independent variable values, not just minus 1, 0, and 1, but also say minus 2, 2, and 3, and 4, and 5, we'd get a whole bunch of function values, or output values if you like. So we'd have our, minus, uh, our 4, 0, and minus 2, that we've already found. Then we'd have a bunch of other ones as well. Now what you can see here is something that you've probably already seen before, and that is the, a picture of a function. You might be used to seeing it as a line that goes through those points, but that's actually how the line is built up. It's just that infinite set of function values for whatever the independent variable values are that you're allowed to use. So we're going to talk about that more in a moment. But for now, that's it for this video. What you're going to see at the end of these videos is some ideas of what you should do next after you've watched it. So for this video, what I think is you can write down in your notebooks or wherever you keep your notes any questions that you think you might need to figure out yourself after watching this video, or perhaps things that you might need to ask your lecturer or your teaching team. In addition, maybe think about what it would mean to be a function that had multiple input variable values. We've only looked at single input variable values. Do you think that would be useful in real life? And what kind of complications might that bring up that we haven't seen with single variable functions? That's it for this one. Uh, go and have a look at some uh, reference texts, think about, think about these questions, and move on to the next videos in the series.